Oh, uh, greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, somebody asked me about strangers in the Bible. Who are the strangers of the Bible because the Bible mentions not to oppress the stranger. Well, I have playlists that cover some of the basic things that I'm going to cover, but people need to realize there are two sea lines in the Bible. You got the Satanic Sea line, which I think 95% of the churches absolutely deny the satanic seed line absolutely i mean they want you to believe that in genesis 6 the flood of noah that believing men the sons of god married unbelieving women the daughters of men so believing men married unbelieving women and they had giants for children Really, that's what they believe. Yeah, and then when you find out about Goliath later in the, about the giants, that they had six fingers and six toes. Yeah, so believing men marrying unbelieving women create giants with six fingers and six toes. Yeah, and then God gets really mad because those believing men marry those unbelieving women and then destroys the world in a flood. And that is the nonsense that the modern church world teaches today because they want you to believe that anybody can be saved. Anybody can be saved. Oh, yeah. And just say a little simple sinner's prayer formula and once saved, always saved. Eternal security. You can take the mark of the beast. People like, uh, what's his name? Yeah, like John MacArthur says, yeah, yeah, Christians can take the mark of the beast. I mean, after all, you know, once saved, always saved, eternal security. But that's not what Jesus says. That's not what my Bible says. I don't think I'd want to, you know, when you take the mark of the beast and you find yourself went to hell and you white throne judgment where Christ is get ready to destroy you for eternity and you say, well, John MacArthur said, well, that's fine and dandy. Go talk to John MacArthur. S you know, have him take you wherever out of hell or whatever. So I told you people not to do it. See, you had faith in the world. You didn't have faith in Christ to feed you and protect you. No. They believe TV preachers, not the Word of God. They don't even bother to read the Word of God. People died to give us the Bible in our language. And the modern world is too lazy to even read it or bother with it. I mean, you can go to Amazon and get the Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y, King James Bible on MP3 or whatever it is, Wave or whatever, and listen to it on your way to work every day, in your car, on your CD player, whatever, your MP3 player. And, and it's 20, 25 bucks. I mean, really? But uh, people that are lazy doing, you know, too lazy to do that, well, they're going to get their reward. You know, I quote Jesus and I get called... Uh, hate speech of course they're pretend believers gee i didn't know quoting uh jesus was hate speech thanks for letting me know people i appreciate it of course we know who they are but all right if you want to do an in-depth study of the strangers real simple you can read the angels that sinned Play, well, read, listen to the Angels of Sin playlist. I got a playlist on it. Several hours of in-depth study on 
who the sons of God were. They were angels. Because in Job 38, they shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Adam didn't come until six days later. Adam was not shouting for joy before he was created. Didn't happen. But yet all your church world will tell you, you know, oh, well, those were the sons of Seth marrying those daughters of Cain. Oh, really? Okay, well, that might that actually might be true if you know who Cain's father is. The Bible says, not as Cain who is of that wicked one. If you think Adam was the wicked one, well, that's on you, but uh, I'm not so sure. Actually, I don't believe that at all, but Adam was not the wicked one. If you want to think Eve was talking to a snake, you can do that. But Revelation 12 tells you who the old serpent is, called the devil and Satan. Eve was not talking to a snake. Sorry, in Genesis 3, by the way. So, who are the strangers? Now, the playlist, the angels that sinned, the sons of God. When you know that, half the battle is won when you read the Bible. It's part of the foundation. When, when people tell you that anybody can be saved... They're either babies that are ignorant of Bible truth or they're deceivers. Either way, they are not to be listened to. I mean, God said to go into the land and kill all the Canaanites. I mean, if they could have been saved, God would have said, oh, go into the, go into the land and and preach to the Canaanites about the love of Jesus. We love them, and I want them to be saved because I care about them. But he didn't say that. He said, go in and kill them all. Yeah. Yeah, that loving God said to go in and kill them all. Don't marry them. Don't take their sons for your daughters. Don't take your, their daughters for your sons to marry. Don't do it. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But they don't believe that. I think it's in Malachi. It says, I am the Lord. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Bible also says, I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I might be paraphrasing that a little bit. So, God doesn't change. The world does. So if you know who the sons of God were and where the giants came from and where the Canaanites came from and how they can't be saved because they're satanic hybrids, that's half the battle. The other half the a battle is knowing that God made a covenant with one family and one family only. And that was Abraham. He reconfirmed it with Isaac and then he reconfirmed it with Jacob Israel. Well, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He didn't make the covenant with the whole world. Paul didn't go to Africa. Paul didn't go to Asia. Paul didn't go to Mongolia or China or India or Japan. He didn't go there. He didn't go to Brazil. He didn't go to Colombia or Argentina. He didn't go there. Jesus said, go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Paul did. He went to Spain. He went to Italy. He went to the land of Israel. He traveled around the Mediterranean. He went to Greece. Ephesians, Thessalonians, those were Greek cities with churches. That's where he went. Philippians, Philippi. So when you know those two things, the Bible makes a lot of sense. Now, Noah had three sons. He had Shem. Shem was where the promised seed line came through. 
If you trace the genealogy of Jesus, you will see he goes through Shem all the way back to Adam, King David, the whole deal, all the way back. Shem was to be the promised seed line. Then you had Japheth. Now Japheth, there was nothing, from what I can tell, there was nothing wrong genetically with Japheth. It's just that he wasn't the chosen seed line. And I hope I can find it, but it said that uh, and somebody of Israel could marry somebody of Japheth, and they were to be accepted after a period of time. No problem. I think Japheth was the stranger. Now there's satanic sea line strangers, and then there's the nothing wrong with them strangers, but they're not just not part of the uh, line of Shef, Shem, who was the promised seed. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, I, you know. But then you got Ham and Canaan. Canaan, now Ham might have been okay. I'm not sure. The Bible doesn't tell us who Ham's mother was. It doesn't tell us who Ham married when he had Canaan. But Canaan was the cursed sea line. You can read the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. The Canaanites were the cursed sea line. God said to go into the land and kill them all. Doesn't sound like a very loving God, does it? Well, when you know what happened in Genesis 6 about the flood... Uh, it all makes sense. You know, they were satanic hybrids. They were half human, half fallen angel. And in the book of Hebrews, well, let's read it. Oh, and by the way, you ever hear these Torah keepers? Um, tell them to quit, quit playing with the law. Maybe they should read the book of Hebrews. You know, it's not the book of the Jews. It's the book of Hebrews. But uh, I've got an entire playlist on the covenants of Abraham. An entire playlist. Hours of studies. Proving without a doubt, God has a chosen sea line. Not the whole world. Period. But the children, the satanic seed line has basically turned the Bible upside down. And everybody thinks that the satanic seed line is the chosen seed line. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Yeah, Hebrew roots. They should read the book of Hebrews instead of reading the book of Leviticus. Anything wrong with Leviticus? No. It was fine until Christ came, but it's been fulfilled. It's been paid in full by the blood of Christ. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses, or I call them the Jehovah Witlesses, because they have no wits. They're witless. They have no brains. They say, see, see, Jesus was made. He's a created God. Well, no. Jesus was made in the likeness of man. He had a body that was made or created for him when he walked the earth. That's what it's talking about here. But we see Jesus who was made, made a little lower than the angels. Isn't man a little lower than the angels? Absolutely. 
In the resurrection, we will be equal unto the angels. Matter of fact, in some ways, we might even be above them because the Bible says that uh, in the resurrection, we are going to judge angels. And I'll tell you what, if um, the Bible records that uh, children have angels. So that little thing about guardian angels, yeah, I got a Bible study on that too. It's true. Uh, the, Jesus said that their angels, speaking of the children, their angels do behold the Father's face. I honestly think we are assigned angels to keep an eye on us. I really believe that. And the Bible seems to support that. And uh, whoever my angel was, um, I give him a lot of credit because, uh, boy, I got in so much trouble. Oof. I'm surprised he didn't die. So, Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And they'll say, well, did God die? Only the body. Read 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifested. God was manifest in the flesh. Period. That's why they don't like the King James Bible. All the other Bibles change that. Verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Christ is the captain of the salvation. Perfect, perfectly through his sufferings, people. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified. What does sanctification and sanctified mean? It means to be set apart for, for God's service. That's what it means. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. Because we're all of one in Christ, right? For which cause he is not ashamed to be to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. I will declare thy name. And what is that name? Yeshua HaMashiach? I don't think so. Gabriel didn't tell Joseph and Mary to call his name Jesus for nothing. The Bible also says not to listen to Jewish fables. That's in Titus. Paul wrote Titus. And pay no heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. But today people are turned unto fables. I will declare thy name unto thy brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again I will put my trust in him. Praise the Lord, you better put your trust in Jesus. You better put your trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me, forasmuch then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Jesus took part of flesh and blood. Absolutely. Absolutely that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Look at that word devil. You take a D and put it in front of the word evil. Get the idea? Absolutely. And deliver them through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's right. Read the story about Laz uh, the rich man and Lazarus. I did a Bible study on that too. You know, there's a search function on my channel. All you got to do is go to the headings where it says videos, community, comments, playlists. Go all the way to the right. It's got a little magnifying glass. Click on that and type in Lazarus or a rich man in Lazarus, or, you know, or Abraham, or whatever, and it pops up. 
Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. The rich man went to hell. Yeah. They were subject to bondage. They went to a compartment. The righteous went to a compartment in hell. Of course, it was the non-smoking section, but they were in hell. They were separated from God until the Redeemer came. Verse 15. And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Verse 16. For verily he, Jesus, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. I can read this two ways. Jesus took on, not on him the nature of angels. He didn't take on the sin of angels. No. Satan and his angels, they're condemned to hell forever. They're condemned. Jesus did not take on the sin of the angels. But he took on him the, the sin of the seed of Abraham. Now there's another way to look at this too. When Jesus was made manifest in the flesh, he took on him of the children of Abraham. He didn't become like an angel. He became like a, a child of Abraham through Adam, through Noah, through Shem, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The angels do not have the offer of salvation. And Jesus took on the seed of Abraham. That's who the Lord made a covenant with. He didn't make it with the whole world. Period. Didn't happen. Verse 17. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, the children of Adam, through Noah and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, not the angels, the people. For in that him, he, for that, for in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Uh, succor means to uh, give aid and assistance. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Oh, yeah. Now, you can go to Genesis chapter 9. You can read about the flood. Uh, you know, it, I, this is not going to be an exhaustive study. I've covered all this material in the past. So, and... Uh, Let's see. All right. So Ham in 9, Genesis 9, 22, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Now, when you are talking about uh, the nakedness of your father, they're not talking about, you know, guys sleeping without any clothes on, without a blanket, generally. I mean, when you talk about the, the nakedness of your father, you're talking, the Bible records how they are sleeping with his wife. May not be your mother, might be a stepmother, but uh, yeah. Well, if you don't believe me, how about Leviticus 18.10? The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness shalt thou not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. Now, are they talking about a, a child that doesn't, you know, you're changing the diaper? No. 
Leviticus 20, 17. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity. Leviticus 18.8. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Ah, does that make sense now about uh, Ham uncovering his father's nakedness? Leviticus 18.6 Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Ah, We could read this all day. Leviticus 18, uh, 7. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Yeah. And if you don't think this is talking about sex, well, here, Leviticus 18, 18. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister. All right, you're married to one girl. You shouldn't be marrying her sister, right? Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Uh, yeah. And here you go. Leviticus 20, 21. If a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He hath uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. I mean, is it is it any more clear than that, or do you need it to be? Do you need me to spell it out for you? A wife uncovering brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. Why are they going to be childless? Yeah, because you looked at her naked body. I don't think so. People don't get. You know, you don't have children by looking at somebody's naked body. That might be the start of it, but yeah. And Leviticus 18, 14. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. Yeah, you get the idea? Okay. So let's go back to Genesis 9. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. 922. All right, well, you can read 921. 20, uh, 920. And Noah get, began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. Yeah, he probably was naked, but that's, you know, looking at somebody naked, is that a sin? No, I think there's more to the story than this. And Ham... The father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his true brethren without. Now, to the casual reader, you're thinking, oh, he just saw his dad's behind, you know. And then you read 23. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. See, there's more to this story than just looking at somebody naked, you know? <laughs> and Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now, if if you're asleep and somebody looks at you, how do you know what, how, how would you know? All right. Some people have said that they probably, he maybe he had sodomized his father. I don't know. Other people think that perhaps he played around with his father's wife, who may not have been his mother. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. When I meet Noah, I'm going to ask him. And he might not want to talk about it, but uh, yeah. Maybe I'll ask uh, Shem. And Noah, and he said, Cursed be Canaan. Wow. Wait a minute. Ham did this sin. Why are you cursing Canaan? Uh, good question. 
a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he, Noah, said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Look at 27, the stranger. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be a servant. So God's going to allow Japheth to be enlarged, bless him with children, and he's going to dwell in the tents of Shem. Japheth and Shem are going to live together. And Canaan is going to be the servant. Yeah. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Now, there's two types of strangers. There's a satanic seed line who are strangers to the covenant that God made with Abraham and his family. And then, what about the children of Japheth? They are also strangers. They're not part of the covenant. But the Bible, the Lord said to not mistreat them. How about Jeremiah 22, verse 3? Thus saith the Lord. Boy, I'll tell you what. You want to read a scary book, read Jeremiah. I got a play. Hey, I did a. I did a commentary on Jeremiah. I got an entire playlist on Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord, execute ye judgment and righteousness. Boy, that's a foreign concept in the uh, courts uh, in the UK, the EU, and the USSA, isn't it? Execute ye judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor and do no wrong do no violence to the stranger who are the strangers that god wanted us to not do violence to probably those that are going to dwell in the tents of shem the children of japheth do no violence to the stranger the fatherless nor the widow neither shed innocent blood in this place hmm Leviticus 24 22 ye shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country for I am the Lord your God see we were to treat the children of uh, Japheth the same. Malachi 3.5 And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear me not, saith the Lord of hosts. Wow. Ezekiel 22, verse 29. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy, yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Yeah. In Deuteronomy 10.19, Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Uh, did you know Le Egypt was called the Lamb of Ham? Yeah. So, the Bible doesn't say, it, to my knowledge, the Bible does not say not one good thing about Egypt. Nothing. Deuteronomy 24, 14, Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant, 
that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. Now, if you don't believe Egypt was the land of Ham, you could read Psalms 105, uh, verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. That's what you call parallelism. Verse 27. They, they showed his signs among them, and wonders in the land of Ham. What were the signs? The signs that the Lord did via Moses in Egypt against Pharaoh. So... Yeah. Psalms 106.22 Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. What happened at the Red Sea? Moses crossed the Red Sea with Israel and the Egyptian army was drowned. Yeah. If you've never read that story, you, you need to be get, get with the plan, people. Uh, here's an interesting verse, and I'll be honest, I'm not sure exactly uh, how it works. But in Deuteronomy 23, verse 7, uh, we're told not to abhor an Edomite. Abhor is hate. For he is thine brother, thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. Now, Egypt was the land of Ham. Verse 8. The children that are begotten of them, Egypt, shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. So evidently, the children of Ham and the children of Canaan look like they're different uh, seed lines there. Joshua chapter 8, verse 33. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side, the ark, and on that side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well as the stranger, as well as the stranger, as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gizram and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. Now, I'm pretty sure these are the children of Japheth, the strangers. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, according to all that is written in the book of the law. Now, this is Joshua, took over, you know, Moses is dying or whatever, and he took over. Um, and I've got the blessings and the curses that God promised Israel if they refused to follow him and do his way, his word, uh, to follow his words and his ways and his laws. And you read the curses and America's there. I got a, I got a Bible study on that too. The blessings and the curses. When America was founded, we had the blessings because the great majority of this country were Christians and their the truth of God's gospel was taught today anything but I mean you have antichrists as presidents of Yale and Harvard which were founded as Bible colleges and if you don't know what an antichrist is well um, anyone that denies Jesus and if you want to know who denies Jesus just look Look at what religious group does not accept Jesus. Because if they did, they'd be Christians. They call themselves, they claim sometimes to be messianic, but are they really? Verse 35. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers and the strangers that were conversant among them. Oh, yeah. So you had believing strangers and unbelieving strangers. The satanic seed line and the not satanic seed line, but not of the chosen seed line. 
In Psalms 146 and verse 9, The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. Now remember, Japheth was to dwell in the tents of Shem. They're to live together. Uh, and then you got the good strangers, and then you got the satanic strangers. You got to make sure you don't confuse the two. How about Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1? For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Now remember, Jacob was the grandson of Abraham, and God changed his name to Israel. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Parallelism and set them in their own land, and the strangers, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. What does cleave mean? You know, a, a husband and wife, a, a husband shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. It means to join together. So the strangers that believe on the Lord will uh, join with Jacob, Israel. Yeah. Who are the strangers? They're not even part of the covenant, right? But of course, when uh, in Jeremiah 3, 8, the God divorced Israel, God divorced Israel. Boy, you'll never hear that taught in a demon nominational church, huh? But then in Jeremiah 31, God says he would uh, make a new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Do you know that Israel was also a stranger from the covenants for a while? Yeah, they were. We'll get to that. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 47, 22. You know what I love doing about, uh, what I love about these Bible studies I learned so much. I mean, I never would have found this verse thinking about it. Ezekiel 47, 22. I mean, somebody once said, if you want to learn a subject, teach it. Somebody once said, if you can't take a complicated subject and uh, turn it into simple terms. Uh, but yeah, if you can't um, explain a subject Simply, you don't know the subject well enough. Ezekiel 47, 22, And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you. Now, they're talking about dividing the land. Everybody gets... Pri God, God believed in private property. Uh, the you-know-whos and the communists do not. And to the strangers, and to the same strangers that sojourn among you, or travel with you, which shall beget children among you, they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They, the strangers, they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. So there you go, people. You know, the strangers that seek the Lord, the Lord accepts them in. Oh, yeah. In Hebrews 13, verse 2, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. 